Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith. My name is Chris Rosebro. I am your servant in Jesus Christ. This is the channel that compares what people are saying in the name of God to the Word of God. Now, we've seen in the comments section of the Todd Bentley video we released a few days ago, uh, Todd Bentley was never qualified, uh, that people are scratching their heads and wondering, how is it that educated adult Christian human beings who have a Bible would fall for Todd Bentley. If this is you, even if it's not you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to like the video, ring the bell so you can be notified when we update the channel. So we're going to dive into that question today. We're going to try to answer the question, how is it possible that, you know, that respected, well-known adult human beings would fall for Todd Bentley? The answer to the question, by the way, comes from a an erroneous belief regarding what are the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute, but I'm going to use two videos to kind of bear this out. And uh, let me go to my desktop. There we go. And then uh, let's turn the screen on here. We're going to start with Patricia King. Patricia King has been doing some postmortems on Todd Bentley and the, uh, the, the sex scandals regarding him, the egregious moral failings on his part. And um, in part one of Patricia King, you know, does a Todd Bentley follow-up, she says something really interesting and worth passing along as we do our own postmortem and, and answer the question, how is it that people are falling for Todd Bentley? Let's take a look. And as far as my history goes, I met uh, Todd in the late uh, 1990s, and um, I just loved him. I love him the same today, um, especially like he was so fired up mm. for God. And he had this passion for the Lord that I'd seen in very exactly. few yeah. others. And and he was um, anointed and gifted. I remember him coming. So he was anointed and gifted. This is part of their theology, which leads to people being set up for somebody like Todd Bentley, who, you know, teaches for shameful gain things he ought not to teach, eyes full of lust and greed, you know, biblical categories like that, because... Well, you believe that he was anointed and gifted. You, you see, th this is this is a weird theology. If he was anointed, then that would make him a Christos. He's a false Christ. We'll talk about that in a minute, too. Coming out to uh, um, a woman's meeting that we were having on Mother's Day, mm -hmm. and the, the sovereign spirit of the Lord came, and I, uh -huh. I was releasing wow. a prophecy over Todd's life that mm. actually launched him into ministry and we took him out on the road with us that mm. summer and doors opened up and it was really amazing. But his born again experience, because people have asked me about that, like questioning it, his born again experience, experience I believe was absolutely authentic. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. authentic. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and his uh, gifting, yes. absolutely, absolutely authentic. Amazing. So his gifting as far as like being able to operate in signs and wonders and perform miracles. So Patricia King says, oh, his gifting was absolutely authentic. Well, listen a little bit uh, The revelations he flowed in, absolutely, absolutely authentic, and still does flow in, mm -hmm. in, in revelation. And the power of God, the miracles, the signs, the oh, wonders, um, it was phenomenal. Incredible. And uh, he, It was, he was one of the things that attracted me so right. much to him in that age, in, that, in those 2003 season when I first started. I, that, by the way, that's uh, Brent Bothwick who uh, was vital behind the scenes at the uh, Lakeland Revival. I started traveling with him full time, and uh, I just hadn't seen with someone with this much passion. Oh, Amazing he, passion. He prayed, amazing. I would hear him through the hotel rooms crying out to God for souls. His, he, was, yeah. he is legitly gifted yeah. and passionate, absolutely. And so, legit, so everything notice, it's all kind of subjective. His experience was legit. He was legitly gifted. He truly operated in signs and wonders. And well, on top of that, he uh, you know had a lot of passion. We're not looking at a biblical standard for recognizing how the Holy Spirit operates. Now, Michael Brown had his own version of this error. And uh, he's a guy who believes that the Brownsville revival was legit because he was part of it. And uh, I want you to hear on his uh, moving on from Todd Bentley investigation video, 
he addresses this issue straight on. And uh, and we'll just listen briefly for his theology in this regard. And we're going to, to, to be fair to Michael Brown, Michael Brown has not supported Todd Bentley since 2008 and has been a vocal critic of his, uh, you know, nominally, you know, even more so behind the scenes. Uh, and so this is coming from a fellow who is not a, a fan of Todd Bentley uh, or a believer that he should be in ministry at all. Uh, and has, he, he uh, Michael Brown's been clear about this for, what, 11, 12 years now? So let's let's listen in, though, as he talks about his belief that the reports that he's received, that Todd Bentley had a legitimate gifting from God, uh, you know, at, you know, you know, from second and third hand reports that he believes those. Let's listen in. Well, I've noticed that some took issue with the idea of Todd being supernaturally gifted. Uh, I cannot attest to his gifting, but but many others can. For example, the medical doctor that raised concern. Now I'm going to note something here. Let's assume for a second that the the re report he's going to give right now truly happened. Is the ability to operate in signs and wonders proof that somebody is truly from God? You know, I'm going to answer this biblically, but I, I just want you to again just put the question forward because we're going to we're going to tackle this a little bit. We'll do some biblical work here in a minute. And then we'll go back in time, and uh, and then we'll we'll end with another portion of scripture because we're, we're I want to do a, a proper post mortem on this. You know how is it that people have fallen for somebody who is as obviously a charlatan, and as as Todd Bentley uh, is. So let let me uh, let me see here. Let me turns to me back. All right, I'm going to back this up, and listen again. In another ministry. Now, I've noticed that. Some took issue with the idea of Todd being supernaturally gifted. Uh, I cannot attest to his gifting, but, but many others can. For example, the medical doctor that raised concerns to me back in 2005 was, traveled with Todd to verify miracles. And he told me he saw it in front of his eyes. Okay, I've never seen this through Todd's ministry. But he said he saw it in front of his eyes. They were either in Pakistan or India. A woman came up blind in one eye. Now, no, we're not sure if it's Pakistan or India. These are secondhand reports. No medical documentation, just the uh, secondhand report of somebody who claims that they saw these things happen. I, and just basically had white. There was, there was no pupil. There's just, it was, it was a. A, a mass of nothing, basically. And in front of this doctor's eyes, and he was a very sober-minded guy, he said, Todd prayed for her in Jesus' name, and he saw an eye form in front of his eyes. I don't believe the devil does that, gives a blind eye sight in the name of Jesus. So I take that as a gift from God. All right. So just because a miracle has happened, that Michael Brown says that must be a gift from God. Is that what the Bible says? Answer, no. So we'll do a little bit of work here. We're going to begin by taking a look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We'll do a little bit of work in Matthew 24 after this so that you can see what's going on. Now, if you haven't seen the video, uh, Todd Bentley was never qualified. I strongly recommend that you go back and watch that, because in the video, we demonstrate that Todd Bentley is um, long on claims of the miraculous, and he has yet to provide any documented evidence of miraculous healings or whatever. In fact, Back in 2008, the Nightline uh, expose, they just asked for three, three instances of documented healings, and they got a binder full of testimonies with medical information, contact information all blacked out, 
And so they got zero medical that verification for any miracles that took place in Lakeland. We noted in 2017, Todd Bentley claimed he had, uh, a kid who came to the Houston Medical Center was uh, resurrected. After he arrived DOA, he was resurrected because they played the live stream for the corpse and he came back to life. Uh, nobody at the Houston Medical Center has va verified that that has taken place. So you'll note that uh, one of the things we're warned about in Scripture are false signs and false wonders, which Todd Bentley clearly operates in. But we're going to get to Michael Brown's category in just a minute, but I want to lay the foundation biblically for what we're to be looking for. Scripture says, the Apostle Paul has prophesied, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word, uh, or a letter seeming to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion— Greek word here, by the way, is apostasia. This, if you have ever heard the prophecies regarding the great apostasy, that, that's where they come from. Uh, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And you know that what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. So you can note here. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work, and that's 2,000 years ago when Paul pens these words. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he's out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. The coming of the lawless one. Now, here's here's where the meat and potatoes bits uh, is for our postmortem on Todd Bentley and why the charismatic movement and the NAR have fallen for this fellow. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false sign. So, so these are false signs, Simeus Sudus, false signs and wonders. Uh, and you'll note that this is going to be a category that we're supposed to be looking out for. So the coming of the lawless one. So with the with the days getting closer and closer and closer to the return of Christ and his day when he will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, as promised in Scripture, that as we get closer to that, uh, there's going to be an increase within the visible church of false signs and false wonders. This is what we're told. So the coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power, false signs, and wonders with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false, in order that all may, believe, uh, may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So you'll note, false signs, false wonders, to be expected within the church. We've already demonstrated that Todd, Todd Bentley operated in false signs and false wonders. Not there's just there's just no way around it. That's the truth of the matter. And you'll note then how are people falling for this? Part of the reason why some people in the charismatic and NAR are falling for this is because God has sent on them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false. Now let's take for a second then this idea. Well, what if there were some legitimate signs and wonders that uh, that that Todd Bentley was able to operate in? What what if that happened? Well, Jesus warns us here about that. So note that Michael Brown has said he believes the secondhand reports and believes that that has to be coming from God. But when Jesus is, is telling us about the last days, and I'll show you the context here, uh, Matthew 24, I'll start in the context. As Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, 
when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, or I am an anointed one. That's what a Christos is. And they will uh, lead many astray. So note the questions. The question was, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? First thing Jesus says out of the shoot is, see that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. So note, deceivers are coming in the name of Jesus, not in the name of Baal, not in the name of Zul or anything like that. They're coming to us in the name of Jesus, and Jesus is warning us ahead of time that as we grow closer and closer to the end of the age, the thing we should be looking look, looking forward to by way of warning is there will be an increase of false Christs and false prophets to lead people astray. Jesus then, later in this same discourse, goes on. He says in verse 23, Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, here's the anointed one, there he is, do not believe it. And then he says this, for false Christs, these are pseudo Christoi, false anointed ones and false prophets, these are pseudo prophetai, they will arise and listen to what Jesus says and they will perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect, see, I've told you beforehand. So we've noted it is documented, demonstrated, that Todd Bentley for sure operated in false signs and false wonders, but Patricia King and Michael Brown believe the reports that Todd Bentley, op- he actually performed signs and wonders, and Michael Brown automatically assumes that if you can perform a sign or a wonder, that makes you legit. It doesn't. Jesus makes it clear that in the last days, there will be some false Christ and false prophets who will legitimately be able to perform great signs and wonders. So how then are you to know these, whether or not these people are true? Answer, it's going to be in the fruit. You're going to see it in their doctrine, in their teaching, and you'll see it also in their lives. And this is the part where the charismatic movement has been perfectly set up by the devil for this kind of deception because they do not embrace the what the Bible says are the true manifestations of the Holy Spirit and instead are looking to these wingnut, wackerdoodle, weird manifestations as somehow proof that this is the Holy Spirit operating among them. And I'm going to demonstrate that by doing a little bit of historical work. We're going to go back in time. And I, I'm going to go back to the apostolic um, commissioning ceremony that took place on June 23rd, 2008. This is C. Peter Wagner presiding, and there's going to be three apostles of note that are going to come up to do an apostolic commissioning of uh, Todd Bentley back in that day. And we're going to note already Todd Bentley was <clears throat> with Jessa, and the Holy Spirit didn't tell any of them any of this. Uh, no, that's weird. A- anyway, uh, so you'll note that um, we're going to get prophecies from the apostle Bill Johnson. We'll, we'll play that. You're going to hear from Apostle Shayon and Apostle John Arnott. Uh huh. And we're just going to, we'll do a little bit of work and then I'll show you some uh, manifestation. And then we're going to look at a key passage that the charismatic movement has somehow forgotten and shows us where the real manifestations of the Holy Spirit are to be looked for. So with that, let's uh, turn things over to C. Peter Wagner as he begins to, uh, well, commission, apostolically commission Todd Bentley. Thank you very much. You may be seated. First, I would like to invite to come forward and accompany me 
Todd Bentley. Cheyenne. Bill Johnson. John Arnott. Now, I would also like to invite the following group of apostles to join us. And please. All right. So, by the way, the three there, Bill Johnson, John Arnott, Shayon, are the noted apostles who will be doing the commissioning, who will provide the apostolic covering for Todd Bentley. But other apostles um, have been invited. Now, those of you who deny that Bill Johnson is an apostle, I'm sorry, but he just allowed himself to be introduced at uh, Todd Bentley's apostolic commissioning ceremony as an apostle. Uh, hold your applause on, until the last one comes up. All right. Stephen Strader from Lakeland, Florida. Hold your applause, everybody. Carl Strader from Lakeland, Florida. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fast forward a little bit here to from you know, all the introduction. Rick Joyner, by the way, was present, um, you know, and some other notable apostles. Let's see if he's still introducing people. Here, Joseph, would you please come forward? Yeah, he's still he's still introducing people. Paco Garcia from Monroe. Yeah, man, it's like a who's who of the he's NAR coming. there. Barry Boucher from Kelowna, Canada. Oh. A warm welcome to those of you who are present in this tent. All right, so now we've got all the apostles on stage. Apostles. They're all false apostles. And to those of you who are watching through God TV, you are about to witness an event which could well have historic implications, not only for the Lakeland outpouring, but also for our nation and many other nations of the world. Prophets have been telling us for years that God is about to launch an extraordinary spiritual awakening with signs and wonders, and for over two months, Todd Bentley has been leading one of the most obvious fulfillments of those prophecies. So, note, they're looking for signs and wonders as the outpouring of the Holy Spirit because... Their so-called prophets led them to believe this was coming. Yeah, yeah. It, so I hate to say it, but they, they thought that uh, Todd Bentley was part of Joel's army. You know, he was part of that young generation who would operate in signs and wonders, you know, as easily as kids today can, you know, work an iPhone. This is an exciting place to be right now. My name is Peter Wagner, and I'm president of Global Harvest Ministries based in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I have served the body of Christ in apostolic ministry for many years, and currently I preside over the International Coalition of Apostles, which brings together over 500 recognized apostles. I have the honor of being assigned to preside over this momentous occasion, and I am humbled as I approach the task with an enormous sense of awe. Holy Spirit, I invite your presence, your power, and your direction. Amen? Amen? This is a ceremony celebrating the formal apostolic alignment of Todd Bentley. Is that like a chiropractic procedure? I'm curious where in, in the Bible we learn about apostolic alignment. My first desire is to lay a biblical foundation for what we are about to do. I will begin with a scripture that has been a central text for those of us who are in the stream of contemporary apostolic prophetic movement, which is Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. And he himself, that is Jesus at his ascension, he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. 
Yet earlier, Paul in Ephesians makes it clear that the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. You don't lay a foundation twice. Just noting that. And people in the NAR, they believe that apostles have been restored to the church, but have been missing for 1,900 years. The word equipping is a translation of the Greek katartizo, which means literally aligning, as in setting a broken bone or a chiropractic adjustment. It means putting things in order so that the body functions as it was designed to function. This is one of the responsibilities of, of apostles, such as those whom you see on the platform. The, yeah, no, that would include Bill Johnson. And that is the reason we are present tonight. For example, Paul wrote to Titus, for this reason I left you in Crete that you should set in order the things that are lacking. Speaking of Paul and Titus, their relationship is a biblical prototype of apostolic alignment. Same with Says who? Where is that in the scriptures? But apply to Paul and Timothy. The apostolic alignment of Timothy and Titus with Paul was a principal factor in allowing God to develop and fulfill his complete destiny. Allowing God to fulfill? Allowing God. What kind of deity do you believe in that requires us to allow him to do things? In both of their lives. But Paul himself was also apostolically aligned. Soon after, he was called to join Barnabas and his colleagues in Antioch for the then controversial ministry of planting churches among Gentiles. He traveled to Jerusalem to bring a gift for famine relief and also to align with some of the apostles. I want to use the experience that Paul had on that occasion as the text for the protocol for tonight's alignment and commissioning of Todd Bentley. It is found in Galatians 2.9, which tells the story of one of Paul's visits to Jerusalem. It says, And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had... Now, note, Todd Bentley is on the stage, hands open towards heaven, and he's already begun twitching and shaking and doing his head back and forth. So I have to ask the question. Is that a manifestation of the Holy Spirit? Is that a sign or a wonder? What legitimate manifestation of the Holy Spirit are we as Christians to be looking for? That? That looks like theatrics to me. have been given to me. They gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. Todd? is following Paul's example by inviting to the platform three apostolic pillars of today's church. Yeah, it's apostolic pillars, apostles, Shayon, Bill Johnson of Bethel, John Arnott of Toronto. Shayon of Pasadena, California, Bill Johnson of Redding, California, and John Arnott of Toronto, Canada, Todd's native land. They represent an apostolic network called Revival Alliance. Notice that the apostles in Jerusalem perceived the grace that God had given to Paul. The word grace is charis, the root of charisma, meaning... Paul was an apostle of Jesus Christ. ...spiritual gift or gifts. In Paul's case, it was the gift mix necessary to carry the gospel to Gentiles. In Todd's case, it is the gift mix necessary to lead the Lakeland outpouring. I have a question for the three apostles. Again, three apostles. Bill Johnson was publicly announced, introduced as an apostle. Do you perceive the grace of God given to Todd Bentley as an evangelist to lead the Lakeland outpouring? I have a question for Todd Bentley. Do you recognize the apostolic authority of these three men in your life and ministry 
And do you desire to establish an apostolic alignment with them and with Revival Alliance? With this affirmation, we will move to a formal commissioning equivalent to offering the right hand of fellowship as the three apostles did to Paul in Jerusalem. This commissioning represents a powerful spiritual transaction taking place in the invisible world. So there's an invisible spiritual transaction taking place here. ka -ching. With this in mind, I take the apostolic authority that God has given me, and I decree to Todd Bentley. Now Todd Bentley's got his hands way up in the air, and he's about to fall over. Your power will increase. Your authority will increase. Your favor will increase. Your influence will increase. Your revelation will increase. I also decree that a new supernatural strength will flow through this ministry. A new life force will penetrate this move of God. So you'll know, the, 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 everyone there thinks that these are real manifestations of the Holy Spirit. But these are false signs and false wonders. Government will be established to set things in their proper order. God will pour out a higher level of discernment to s distinguish truth from error. Uh -huh. New relationships will surface to open the gates for the future. Well, we can say that, um, see, Peter Wagner's apostolic prophecy here, well, didn't come to pass. That makes him a false prophet. And a false apostle. So, so there's Todd Bentley is shaking his head back and forth. That's got to be a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, right? 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 Now, keep in mind the reports coming out of Lakeland after the fact were that Todd Bentley already by this point was um, oftentimes on stage for real drunk, having had too much to drink. And while he was already... Um, engaging in sexual misconduct with Jessa, who wasn't Jessa Bentley at the time. She was one of the interns working there at uh, Lakeland. Yeah. And, oh, and by the way, Todd was married. Yeah, he was married, had a lot of kids too. Yes, God! Yes, God! Cheon, you may now proceed. So the Apostle Cheon has now got the microphone. First of all, on behalf of my wife, Sue, I want to ask all of you for forgiveness for coming so late. We were supposed to be here at 5 o'clock and typical uh, mechanical problems that uh, they were actually going to cancel our flight. But because you were praying and people were praying, they got another plane for us and we were able to arrive just on time for this commissioning service. So we thank God for it. I um, want to just say how deeply honored I am that John would just come from Africa and make time to be here, Bill. I mean, it's a miracle that Peter Wagner, Bill Johnson, John Arnott, Todd Bentley, and these uh, distinguished apostles would all be able to make it. And, and these distinguished apostles. All together at one time, one place. That's his, with our international commitments, that's a miracle in itself. And, um, and I also feel, Todd, significant that um, two things, one, that this would be on June 23rd. Bob Jones prophesied that you will go to a whole different level June 22nd. Remember that? So here's the day after. And, we're, and you're going to a whole different level. Isaiah 22, 22. Uh, he's giving you the keys of David. He's opening doors that no man can close. And so it was... Wow, God gave Todd Bentley the keys of David. Woof, at least he's got that going for very, him. Very, very significant that this is taking place. And it was not because of Bob's prophecy. It was just based on our calendar but I think it's significant that it would be here on this day, a day after that word was prophesied. I also think it's significant that we have three generations coming together. God's a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, you know, we're old enough to be your dad. <laughs> and Peter's old enough to be your grandfather. And so... So it's wonderful that we could come together three generations. So I want to proceed recognizing that God has chosen you and appointed you to bear.
Okay, no, he he's Todd Bentley. Whoa, just kind of fell back. See that? That's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, right? Much and lasting fruit in this Lakeland revival and revival around the world, recognizing that he has called you as an Ephesian for evangelist and a revivalist moving in signs and wonders, knowing that you have walked in a manner worthy of... Operating in signs and wonders. False signs, false wonders. ...the Lord, pleasing Jesus in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the intimacy and knowledge of God, we, as your brothers and your friends, who have a deep love for you, Shauna, your whole family, just a... Yeah, Shauna was his wife at the time. She isn't anymore. Team, you, we are here to stand with you, to support you, and we are here to commission you. So, no, he's, he's, he's getting, you know, slapped around by the Holy Spirit now. In the name of the Father. Oh, it looks like he's got fall Son, over. And Holy Spirit, in the power of Jesus' name, with special oil from Chuck Pierce. It's called Revival Oil. Chuck could not make it. Chuck Pierce's Revival Oil. <laughs> Forget the snake oil. We're selling the Revival Oil now. But he sent this FedEx special oil for you. He's in Africa. And so we anoint you and commission you in Jesus' name. So is this, is this a manifestation of the Holy Spirit? Again, by this time, he's already committing adultery. And he's oftentimes going on stage drunk, physically, for real, inebriated. Whoa, wow! Oh, wow! So he just fell over, wow! Boom! <laughs> Bam. That's got to be the Holy Spirit, right? Bam. We want to give him a little bit of his own medicine. <laughs> Yeah, he just said, bam. Yeah, because one of the things that Todd Bentley was famous for at Lakeland was bam. People were calling him bam, bam. Yeah. Bam. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going to ask John and Bill to share and pray. Now, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. I'm going to fast forward to where Bill Johnson you know, gives his uh, prophecy regarding Todd Bentley because that's uh, educational, the best way I can put it. So this is John Arnott winding up, but I want you to, because Bill Johnson, people think this guy's legit. No, he's not. He's a false apostle. Jesus, and we stand with you, and we encourage you, and we honor you. No, he's still on the ground there. They haven't called medical professionals yet. So here's the apostle Bill Johnson now to give some kind of apostolic commissioning prophecy over the uh, the keeled over supposedly manifesting the Holy Spirit Todd Bentley. When David wanted Uriah killed, he sent him into battle and then withdrew from him. As a company of people, we refuse to do that. Many revivals through history have been cut short of their intention of God's destiny and intention over individuals because of jealousies. And By the way, I would note that uh, Todd Bentley's shaking uncontrollably on the ground there. If you were to look in Scripture to find an example of something like that and ask yourself the question, which spirit causes that type of manifestation? I would note that um, that's exactly the behavior of a demoniac, not somebody filled with the Holy Spirit. Y yeah, no, I, I'm not making that up. Let me see if I can find this. Um, um, I know the help. Let me do, let me do it this way. Yeah, help my unbelief. There we go. And we're gonna look for those words in the Gospels. Help my unbelief. Mark 9, there we go. All right, so we're going to go to Mark 9. And let's see. So Jesus goes up, and he's transfigured. All right, so he comes down from the Mount of Transfiguration. And so when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them, the uh, scribes arguing with them. Immediately, all the crowd, when they saw Jesus, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And he asked them, 
what are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to bear with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. When the spirit saw Jesus, immediately he convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. You know, I, I'm just saying that Todd Bentley's on the ground, rigid, and doing this kind of stuff. That, if that's a manifestation of a spirit, um, when I search the scriptures, I see it as a manifestation of a demonic spirit. That's consistent with what scripture says. By the way, we're you know we're pointing out that. What the Charismatic and NAR are refusing to do is rightly acknowledge the true manifestation of the Holy Spirit that we're supposed to look for, and that's what's causing them to fall for an obvious deceiver, false prophet, false anointed one, false teacher like Todd Bentley. So we come back to it. Let's keep Fears listening. Fears get stirred up in the people of God, and we refuse to do that. We shape the course of history by partnering with you, giving honor where it's due. You welcome the glory as well as anybody I've ever seen in my life. I long to learn from you in that. You want to learn from him. And so Todd Bentley's still out just convulsing there on the ground. And I bless you and I pray with the rest of these that the measure of glory would increase, that Moses would no longer be considered the high water mark where the glory shone from his face but instead the revelation of the goodness of God would change the face of the church and that he would use your voice, he would use your grace, your anointing to alter the face of the church before this world, that the goodness of the Lord would be seen once again. I pray this over you in Jesus' name. All right, now I'm going to fast forward here to one last manifestation. Uh, the Apostle Stacy Campbell. Mm -hmm. Listen and watch this. Here we go. Um, Todd, <clears throat> when we were singing that song, uh, that's okay, um, show me your glory, um, I, I felt impressed to open the scriptures to the very portion of scripture where Moses said, show me your glory. And it was the very pinnacle prayer of Moses' life. Yeah, this is crazy go nuts here, right? Is this a manifestation of the Holy Spirit? And this prayer came after a burning bush, came after the release of national judgments, came after going into the cloud of glory and receiving the tablets, came after Numbers 24, where Moses went on the mountain with 70 elders and ate and drank with God. And in this pinnacle prayer. All right, that's about as much of that as I can handle. So what is it that the NAR and the charismatic movement have missed? They are looking for signs and wonders. And you come with them with uncontrollable shaking and convulsing and barking and laughing uncontrollably say that's got to be the holy spirit and but todd bentley comes to them operating in all of these false signs and false wonders and they're they're wondering how they got schnookered by all of this it's real simple it's found in galatians chapter 5 galatians chapter 5 says this paul the, a, a real apostle writes, I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. We'll talk about what that means in a minute. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality. That's what we're dealing with with Todd Bentley. And you're going to note habitual, repeated, impenitent patterns 
of sexual immorality. Works of the flesh are sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But what comes next are the real fruit of the Spirit, the real manifestations we are to be looking for. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. A good way to put it is that the Church has always believed that the primary work of the Holy Spirit is to sanctify, to make holy, penitent believers. And so what was missing with Todd Bentley was any real holiness. He wasn't manifesting any of the real fruit of the Holy Spirit. He was openly manifesting the works of sinful flesh, and because the charismatic movement, rather than looking at a penitent, holy life as the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, and seeing that as what we're to be looking for. Instead, chasing after these outrageous, goofy, so-called signs and wonders, and thinking those are manifestations of the Holy Spirit, because of that, they were incapable of rightly looking at and identifying the evil and the deception that was openly operating in their midst, and whom they were participating with, praying with, endorsing, and all this kind of stuff, because they were looking for the wrong signs. They were looking in the wrong place. They were looking for the innovative, the crazy, the insane, the almost practically demonic, and saying, well, that, that's real. But again, Scripture warns us about false signs, false wonders, and Jesus warns us that false Christs and false prophets would arise and perform great signs and great wonders to, me- to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. The real fruit of the Holy Spirit that we're looking for, the real manifestations of the Holy Spirit that we're looking for, are a broken and contrite heart, broken because of your own sin. Bearing the fruit of the Spirit, not the works of the flesh. And the idea here is we Christians... We are able to obey God because of the Holy Spirit, not because we are able in and of ourselves. We we actually, in and of ourselves, we do not have the strength to obey God. And so uh, the life of a Christian looks something like this, if you would. Over and again, we look at the holy commandments of God found in the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not covet. You you see, we, we see these commands. They come at us, and unfortunately, because we are all sinners, God's holy law yells at us and screams at us that you're guilty. You are not doing what God commands you to do. And so oftentimes we think, well, the thing we got to do then is we got to get busy obeying. But see, your sinful flesh is not capable of obeying God's law perfectly or even stuntedly, and will only obey it under threats you know, of punishment, It's kind of like a beast of burden. But see, a Christian, a baptized, penitent believer in Jesus Christ is filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is now works in us the ability to mortify our sinful flesh and to begin to bear the fruit of the Spirit, not the the fruit of our efforts, but the fruit of the Spirit. So how does that look then? So when God's law says to you, you have not measured up, you say, this is most certainly true. 
I am a sinner. What does John say? If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when the law says you're guilty, you're a sinner, you say this is true, and you cry out to Christ for mercy, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Christ forgives you. You are forgiven in Christ. And then the Christian, the penitent believer, prays this kind of prayer. And this, this prayer goes something like this. Lord, I know that your commandments require of me that I obey them. Please, through your Spirit, give me what your law is commanding me to do. That makes it possible so that when God, the Holy Spirit, works the fruit of the Spirit in you, you don't boast, but you recognize that even the ability to obey, you humbly received as a gift from God. So that God always gets the glory, even in your, well, paltry obedience in this lifetime. See, you get the idea. So walking by the Spirit is by walking by faith, saying, God, I am, I struggle to obey you. Please give me the ability through your Spirit, your Holy Spirit, to work in me holiness so that I can obey your commands. You see, the Holy Spirit works in the penitent believer. Holiness. That's what the Holy Spirit does. I think you get the point. And that's why the charismatic and the movement and the NAR are they were duped by Todd Bentley. They're lusting after these signs and wonders and believing these false prophets who say we're just on the cusp of all these signs and wonders breaking forth set them up perfectly because they were ignoring the real manifestation of the Holy Spirit that we're to be looking for. And Todd Bentley has never been bearing those manifestations in his life. And already by Lakeland, he was a drunk adulterer. And they overlooked this because he can shake on stage and fell over at the right time and tells tall tales and stories and has healing lines and people fall over and stuff like that. None of those are the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. The, the manifestation we're looking for is a broken and contrite heart and bearing fruit in keeping with repentance as the Holy Spirit works in us holiness. And that's what Todd Bentley has never had. I think you get the idea. So if you found this helpful, all the information on how you can share the video is down below. Just want to remind you, Fighting for the Faith, we're supported by you, the people that we serve. So if you don't already support us financially, all the information on how you can support us financially is down below in the description by, by becoming a crew member. And one of the things I've been saying is, is that if you uh, join our crew uh, what we will do uh, in the month of January, if you join our crew at Gunner's Mate or above, um, I'm a photographer also. Uh, I will send you a copy of my print, All Things London, as my way of saying thank you for joining our crew at Gunner's Mate or above. So uh, that just want to let you know that. And plus, we can't do what we're doing without your continued financial assistance. So until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. Thank you.